everyone, and welcome to the Pip and Pin podcast. My name is Megan Nodecker, and I'm a knitwear designer from Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Knit Pip and Pin, on Instagram as Pip and Pin, and at pimpin.ca, and I will have the links to those all below for you. One second here. There we go. <laughs> all right, so location number two. <laughs> if I'm probably going to be switching around a couple times um, over the next couple weeks just to see where I like it best here. Um, if this is your first time here, I just kind of moved into a new office space and I don't know what to do with it yet. <laughs> so we're going to, I'm trying to set up, what I'm trying to do is set up a place where I can just sit down and hit record. Um, because I've never had that before. I've always had to like set everything up. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do, but it takes a little fan dangling. So let me know um, if you watched the last episode, which do you prefer? Do you prefer me seeing my desk area, which looks just about as barren as it did last time, <laughs> except more, I've, you can tell I've been working a little more here. Um, so there's more stuff, but it's not nice looking stuff. <laughs> seeing more of the room. Anyways, that's not what this podcast is about. This is about knitting and uh, all the different things that I do. So first off, I'm going to talk about what I'm wearing. Um, this is probably one of my most worn, most favorite top five knits of all time. Um, this is the Quinnell sweater. I designed it Oh, very long time ago. <laughs> it was probably the design that made me feel like a designer. Um, so it, it has a special place in my heart. Aside from just being the most amazing shade of red, it's this like very cool, very dark, tweedy red. It has um, little flecks of kind of blue and the little bright pops, a little bit of green in there, and then lots of like really, really dark. This is, don't mind, hmm, cat hair. Um, this is the Fiber Company Erin Moore Light. Uh, it's a DK weight yarn, but I would consider it more of a sport fingering, so keep that in mind um, if you do decide to work with it. <laughs> um, really lovely fabric, though. Um, probably the reason why this has been one of my top five all-time sweaters is because it is light. Um, so it is quite lofty. It is, um, like a woolen spun yarn, so it's not very dense, it's very airy, um, and just the climate that I'm in, you know, it's just the perfect, perfect sweater. Wait. <laughs> um, as for the design itself, it's really, um, a drop shoulder open front cardigan with this beautiful big shawl collar. Um, it's definitely like an over, outerwear kind of kind of feel. It's oversized. Um, and then it has just knit and purl texture kind of throughout. It has these arrows down the sleeves. It has um, the same kind of arrow texture down the whole body and then different, um, just different little separating lines there. I do need to um, repair this and care for it a little bit, a little bit because it does get worn so much. It definitely needs a good wash. It needs a good block. And I know there is a section at the, um, on the collar where I picked up stitches that has broken. I mean, it's woolen spun yarn, so it is not super crazy durable, in, especially in places, um, where you have seams and things like that, where it's constantly pulling. So it did break there. Um, so I might just reinforce it with a, with a stronger, fiber. Um, the great thing about it being wool and spun is it, it's not unraveling or anything. It just is kind of broken and sitting there waiting for me to fix it, <laughs> which is why I haven't fixed it yet because I can still wear it. <laughs> Anyways, um, you can find this pattern on Ravelry. Um, I'll make sure I put a link to it down below. Uh, as for finished objects, um, you know, I hadn't been podcasting so much over the summer or, you know, a lot <laughs> because it's, you know, I, I ebb and flow. 
podcasting for me. But one thing I kind of forgot about was how motivating it is to finish those projects that I wasn't super excited to finish. (laughs) The last night I was writing my list of, you know, things to bring here and talk about today. uh, And I realized I hadn't worked on Georgia's socks at all. They got to the point where the toes were done, like all the all the bits were done, I just had to do the heels. And I was just waiting to like measure her foot to see where to pop the heel in, because it's an afterthought heel. And um, so I was like, oh, why don't I just finish those? So I did, (laughs) because I wanted to show you a finished thing. I didn't have anything finished. I was like, I can finish this in, you know, in an evening. And then Georgia has a pair of socks. So anyways, these are the ones I'm talking about. These are just a pair of afterthought everythings. Oops, let me pause you for a second here. All right, sorry, my computer was just telling me that I was potentially running out of space, uh, so I didn't want to stop recording. So I deleted some things. Anyways, um, so these are the afterthought everything socks. Uh, So basically, I knit a tube with this uh, self-striping yarn. This is Knit Picks Felici in, I think Surprise was the colorway name. Um, and Georgia picked it out, of course. It's very bright, very rainbow, very Georgia. And then all I did after the tube was done is I cut it in half and then I put on the cuffs and toes and heels. So I did the heels last and that's what I was waiting for was for her to um, try it on essentially so that I could know where to put the heel. and. I should have gone with my gut. (laughs) I should have put the heel right in between these stripes instead of putting it in the middle of that one. Um, It does make the sock a little bit big for her, but I mean, I guess that just means she'll be able to wear it for a little bit longer. I mean, it fits on my sock locker now, but it is quite, quite long on her. I'd say at least half an inch, an inch too long but she's perfectly happy with it. (laughs) This um, yarn that I was using for the heels, toes, and cuffs is a mystery stash yarn. I'm not sure what it is or where it came from, Um, but it has sparkles and Georgia loves it. And it just looks like happy birthday, super fun little socks. So she was, she was quite sad that she outgrew her. She had a pair of like super rainbow socks uh, that I knit with the gauge dye works all together now. I knit her a pair of socks using that with something else double and she really loved those. So she needed a new pair of rainbow socks and she got it and filming this episode made me finish them. So, (laughs) All right, as for things that I'm working on, um, I do have some progress show you and I'll show you this one first this is another sock I've been working on I'm carrying around in my custom-made LB tree um, bag Uh, she's a bag maker from I want to say Calgary somewhere in Alberta (laughs) and I got to design this myself and she made it Um, she has a very cool website where you can just custom make whatever kind of bag you want. And then if you get too um, overwhelmed with all the options, you can just say, pick the rest for me. So like you can pick the outside bag color and you know, the strap color or something like that. And then just say, I don't know what to do. So pick the rest and she'll do it for you. And all the ones that I've seen um, have been kind of cool. (laughs) So inside this bag is I, nearly finished sock. (laughs) This is just a, uh, let me put it on a blocker here. It's just a plain vanilla sock. I was going to make these afterthought socks because I had originally cast them on for like movie theater knitting, but I I don't know. I just got to where the heel was and then I just started doing a heel. (laughs) So not afterthought, everything sucks just regular vanilla socks. I did a heel flap and gusset and I did just a slip stitch kind of reinforced here. Now one thing I did differently with the heel which I've never really done before is generally 
you kind of have the, the gusset decreases go along this line. So you kind of have the triangle here. And I just wanted to try something different. So I put it kind of here and did in, and I did the opposite decreases than I usually would. So it, say I was supposed to, supposed to, do uh, knit two together to get that line here. I just did an SSK going this way and that created just a different line. I think if I was to do it the same next time, because what I did is I have 64 stitches. So I used 32 stitches kind of here so that it would be even at this part. I think if I was to do this again, I would line it up with the bottom of the um, heel flap here instead, just so that this line would kind of continue on. But that's for next time. Um, I thought that it might be like underneath my foot and would be weird there, but after putting it on, I realized it's not, that's not really like, you're not stepping on it or, or anything. It's just kind of on this weird side bit of your foot. Um, so next time I think I'm just going to drop them down and have them more in line with that. Cause I think that's a really interesting look and just a little bit of a variation on the classic, uh, heel flap and gusset. And then I just did a wedged toe like I always do. And, um, I know I said this was kind of last time, this was just a cuff I had done for a different sock that I knew I wasn't going to finish. So I kind of stole it <laughs> just so that I didn't have to cast on, but I ended up really liking the cream with, uh, with this speckly yarn. So I just uh, continued on because I have enough of it. And this is Bigfoot Fiber Company um, in the colorway Sugar Plum. And I got that many years ago at a trunk show they did at a store in Bellingham. Um, and finally, finally cast it on. <laughs> After many, many years of sitting in my stash, it finally gets to be something. So you may be thinking, Megan, why the heck didn't you just Kitchener this off? <laughs> and because that's literally all I have to do is just Kitchener this sock closed. I always like to cast on the second sock right away. Um, so as soon as I finish that Kitchener stitch, I want to cast on the next sock so that it's ready to go and there's not that like extra barrier. So I just didn't Kitchener it because I wasn't ready to cast on the next sock yet. <laughs> so I didn't want to commit to that much. So when I go back, I will Kitchener this and then immediately cast on the second sock. I just wasn't able to do that at, I think I was at swimming lessons or something when I got to the end of this. And instead of Kitchenering it, I just left it. Um, yeah, because I find if I, if I don't cast on that second sock right away, I have a hard time thinking about casting it on. So I just didn't, I just didn't, fin I purposely didn't finish this sock so I wouldn't have to cast on the next one. Because <laughs> that is how my brain works. Um, the next thing I've been working a ton on I think it's going to be pretty amazing. It's a new design I've been working on. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> I know people have been waiting for it for a while. Um, and it is the Mema DK. And Mema is probably one of my most popular patterns. It's a fingering weight cardigan. It's open front. It has some textured brioche on the front and the back, and then just kind of three quarter length, really wide, really relaxed um, stockinette sleeves. I took some liberties with the DK version <laughs> and I think what I'm going to do is put some notes in the pattern to make it look like the, the fingering weight one because I didn't really want to make an exact replica just in a different weight yarn. I really wanted to like add some different features to it. So what I wanted, because I love a good, oh, I'm in the middle of a row. <laughs> uh, ooh, this is really awkward. Okay, I'm actually going to pause. I'm going to finish this row, and then I'm going to tell you about all the different things I switched about it. <laughs> all right, that's better. Now I can actually show you what I've been working on. So this is... It so far. It is just about done. I am now just working on the front band. Um, so this band goes all the way loop up 
and down and around. Um, and I did add some shaping in the back so that it folds over nicely uh, because it's going to be big. <laughs> and when I made this decision, you know, I wasn't thinking clearly uh, about how long one by one rib takes. <laughs> So this has been a labor of love for sure, but I feel like the end result is going to be really, really beautiful. So it's going to be ooh, probably like probably four inches or so wide. So I may be maybe halfway there. Um, I was also thinking of adding some short rows to kind of make the top bit a little bigger, fold over a bit. Um, yeah, so that's one difference is that the front band uh, on the original Mema is just this little tiny one by one twisted rib one inch band. It just finishes it off. This is going to be a collar. This is going to be a focal point. And the reason I wanted to add that is because I also, instead of having three quarter length sleeves, um, because this is a heavier weight, I wanted it to be more of a cozy sweater. Um, Mame, original Mema fingering weight is really great for spring and fall and like even summer throwing on over top of a t-shirt or a tank top and um, you know just this lightweight thing since this is DK yarn I wanted to make something a little cozier and like more winter-ish so I used the same concept of the textured brioche the raglan the really low raglan oversized fit really big sleeves but I just continued that sleeve all the way down and then um, cinched it in at the at the cuff there. Um, I know this isn't really everybody's cup of tea, but I had a cardigan like this um, that I really love. <laughs> and um, I just kind of wanted to recreate that, that fit. Um, if you don't like balloon sleeves, that's something that's so easy to alter. Um, like I said, I think I'm going to put in instructions for how to make it more like the Mema um, with the three quarter sleeves and the little band in front. Um, but also if you ever come across a pattern with balloon sleeves that you don't like, like maybe you just want it more like this, um, you know, more of a coat, um, you can just not do decreases <laughs> because every, every balloon sleeve will have some decreases here at the end, if I just knit a um, this cuff without doing those decreases, it would fit more like this. So that's just a huge tip. <laughs> but I am very excited. Maybe I'll, let's see if I can slip it on. Every time I try it on, I'm just so happy with it. And I love it when that happens. <laughs> caught on my cable needle a little bit, um, but this is essentially how it's going to fit. So see, it's not even that, um, you know, it's not that poofy. It's not giant. I just wanted a little bit. Uh, so to balance out that sleeve, I really want the nice big collar on there as well. Um, I was, you know, the thing too, I was a little bit iffy about the length. Um, because I know that I'm using superwash yarn, so it will stretch a little bit. Um, I was a little bit iffy about the sleeves as I was knitting them. Um, so what I did, instead of stopping and like re-knitting or doing anything right then, uh, I put it on a cable needle and I blocked it. <laughs> so before I did the, the hem and before I started the collar, I blocked it. I put it on a spare cable. And I wet blocked the whole thing and um, I would suggest doing that anytime you're unsure about things <laughs> uh, because blocking really does relax things and it gives you a truer idea of what how it's gonna fall um, you know with with this yarn the sleeves were a little stiffer um, which I didn't like and then I blocked it and they just it became amazing. Um, <laughs> so if you're ever kind of stuck on a point with a sweater, give it a block and see what that does. Um, doesn't matter where you are in the, in the sweater. Like you don't have to finish a sweater 
in order to block it. You can block it whenever you need to. Just keep in mind that like when I then went back, like it was the right length to add the, um, the hem at the bottom. So when I was doing the hem, then I started becoming unhappy with the hem because it wasn't as tidy as everything else, obviously because I hadn't blocked it yet. So keep that in mind too, as you continue on with your knitting, that it won't match. Um, but once you do the final block again, I did actually steam out, you know, I was concerned about the bottom hem. <laughs> so I did steam out the bottom hem just to make sure that that was gonna work before I started my monster of a collar. Um, but yeah, keep, keep that in mind that it will be different. And then once you do the final block of it all together, it'll all become the same. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last thing that I've been working on these past couple weeks is just some swatching for a new sweater. So I, I kind of have an idea and I don't really know if I talked about it too much last time, but I got this, um, to go wool fingering from um, Woolen Waves and I am designing a sweater with it. I don't really quite know the style precisely yet, <laughs> but I know it's going to be color work and I know it's going to be a cardigan. Uh, I just haven't really decided on construction yet um, because I don't particularly love circular yoke cardigans. So I know that's not it, <laughs> but I haven't really gotten anything past that. So we'll see. Now I have been just doing some swatching. Um, I don't design a ton of color work. So I've just been testing some things out and I'll show you kind of some of my favorites. I have the three um, or four colors here. Um, I have this purple and I thought this was a really cool idea too of just doing stripes of all my colors with my main color to see what they were doing. And um, after I kind of did these stripes, I also took a black and white photo of it because if you take a photo of some things in black and white, it will show you um, the contrast. And so I actually picked three colors um, that are all different contrasting, which I thought was, was kind of cool. So the white, of course, is very contrasted. This gray is kind of in the middle. And then this purple, even though they're two totally different colors, um, are actually very, very similar tones. So they are very low contrast. And you can kind of see that in here. I think this is one of my favorite little motifs, just that diamond there, but it has the purple in the background. Um, and it's just a nice subtle detail. I did like this um, little motif here as well, but I don't think it has the right feeling. <laughs> it's, it's just a little bit too graphic for what I was thinking. I was thinking more classic. Um, so I really like that diamondy bit. Uh, so I kind of played with that a little bit more here and did it just a little more, um, a little stronger um, in this little section. This, uh, I don't really like any of that. I stopped this one halfway through because I really didn't like it. Um, but then I also really liked this. And this is kind of like, a, I think it's called a flea stitch. And I did that with the purple and the gray. I tried it with the white and the gray, which I like. But I think I like it with the purple and the gray better. It's just even more subtle. So it might be all over. Um, and then just some other ideas. But meh. <laughs> so that's kind of been my process with this swatch. I've just been playing around with looking in stitch dictionaries and getting inspiration from other places and testing them out with my colors. Um, I have been doing this swatch also um, flat. <laughs> so I know generally uh, color work like this, feral color work, um, stranded color work is done in the round. And if you want to do a cardigan, you either steep it or, or do something else because people are a little afraid of doing the pearl rows. Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to design it <laughs> with 
color work with flat color work. Um, I quite enjoy it and I do it differently. Um, like my purling is not the same as my, as my knitting. So my knitting, I hold um, my background color in my right hand. Um, I'm a thrower, so that's usually how I knit. And then um, my like pop of color um, for my motif in my left hand and I knit continental with that. I don't know how to purl continental. <laughs> well, I know kind of how to do it, um, but not consistently and not very nicely. And I find purling with two strands to be not as intuitive as, as knitting with two strands. So I actually hold both of my yarns in my right hand um, when I when I purl. Um, I just kind of hold, because I, I don't throw, like I don't hold my yarn and throw, I actually have it resting over top of here and I just kind of flick. Um, so I will have one strand on one side of my finger and one strand on the other side of my finger. So I will flick with one and then throw with the other. Um, and that's what seems to work for me. <laughs> So I think, I think that's just something that you have to practice and like figure out whatever way works best for you. Um, it did not feel natural at all <laughs> the first time I did it. And I realized that doing more complex patterns, purling, um, was quite difficult. Um, so it, because you're not looking at it the same way, you're looking at the backside when you're, when you're doing the purl rows. So it does make it a little bit trickier to keep track of what you're doing because you're not able to see what you're doing as easily. Um, so I think for this sweater, I am going to design it to be knit flat, but I am going to keep it to more simple motifs. Like the flea motif was very simple to do. Um, these diamonds, are quite simple as well because you can see kind of you can build on the previous row a little easier than if you were doing something a little more intricate. Um, another thing about doing stranded color work flat that I thought was that I liked I don't know was um, was when you turn because you don't want to just do your color do your row of color work and then drop your um, your secondary color you know, work with your main color and then go back because you're, you would end up with, um, like really weird stitches along the edge <laughs> because there's nothing holding them there. Um, but I found that I have a two stitch, um, kind of border around everything in my main color. So if I was working one way with the color and then I had to go purl back with the same color, uh, just catching like you basically just catch a float in that selvage and then you can work back and your stitches are still all nice and clean and neat on the sides. So this has been a huge learning experience for me. Um, I thought it was going to be much scarier to do stranded color work flat, <laughs> um, but it really is not. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to jump in and do something super complicated if I was to do, um, like I made a once in floral sweater. It has this beautiful rose um, motif color work on the, on the yoke. I wouldn't do that because uh, it's too complicated. <laughs> it's too complicated in my brain. But something more simple, more straightforward, I'm going to do it. So I just don't know what kind of construction it's going to be. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a raglan or... I don't think I'm going to do drop shoulder. So I think either it's going to be a raglan or a set in sleeve. But that might add a little more complexity to it. We'll see. What are your thoughts? What do you think I should do with this? <laughs> um, this fabric is really lovely. I think I did this on a US 4 and this on a US 3. Obviously this one's been blocked. This one has not. Um, <laughs> and then I can kind of compare the fabrics. Um, really lovely fabric. It's beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, it's not super scratchy, but I feel like this is going to be more of a, it's going to be shaped similarly to, to this. It's going to be a little more oversized. It's not going to be for wearing a, next to skin, really. Um, 
because it's not super soft and it's just not really the type of that type of sweater so we'll we'll kind of see where that goes um i'm definitely still in the planning stages with that one right now <laughs> um and that's it that's it for for my knitting um but i do have a couple other things to chat about um, I recently got in the mail, I was part of the In Tandem Kickstarter, and In Tandem is a pattern magazine um, that my friend Jessica of Snickerdoodle Knit started, and it's essentially, um, at its inception, was a collaboration between the designers. So it wasn't her creating this book and... Um, you know, getting other people to submit designs or anything. It was more of a collaboration between everyone and the designers and um, kind of the profits were, were split that way. So I think it was a really cool idea to switch things up as a publisher. Um, and so the first issue came out. I think they, I bought the Kickstarter last year and I finally got the, the first issue. Um, so this is it. This is In Tandem, Autumn 2023, Issue 1. Um, this is all using um, Maldrigal yarn. And you can get this on um, their website, which I'll put a link down below. You can get the digital version on Ravelry, um, or you can still order the printed copy, which is beautiful. Um, like, it's just, I really love this. They show you every single one of the patterns right in the first page. Um, the photography is gorgeous. The models are all so beautiful and diverse. And just the patterns themselves are big print, easy to read, um, really nicely laid out. And I was actually talking to Jessica yesterday and I was chatting about, about the book with her. And um, she asked me which which one I was, you know, most likely to cast on. And she's working on this one, um, which is like a cowl using short rows and it kind of creates this wave. Um, my favorite, I will show you in here. If I can find it. My favorite is this sycamore scarf. And it's this, I'm going to show you right there. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful, like lightweight scarf thing. I think I would make it a little bit longer. Um, what you can't really see in that picture is this beautiful texture. So it's just all texture all the time. DK weight, uh, sport weight. Yeah. And of course in the most beautiful Melgrillo color, in my opinion, um, glitter. Which always, I don't know, it always just didn't seem to match the colorway to me, which is why I kind of love it. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, so that is available and you can get your copy. Um, you can get your copy at their website. I'll put the link down below. It's very awesome to go, go check it out. I just thought it was such a cool idea of um, bringing designers together. Um, I also had a shop update. Oh, oops, I just need to just grab this. Sorry. All right, so every fall, um, pretty much like clockwork, uh, it rains and I get the urge to make stitch markers. So that's kind of what happened. <laughs> I made a whole bunch of stitch markers and I had a big shop update. Um, there are still quite a few left. Um, so I'll show you some of my, some of my favorites that doesn't sell. <laughs> so first we have, um, I have three of these left. So these are, um, little mushroom progress keepers and they are made of glass. Um, and I have one brown one and two red ones left. And then I can also put them on a stitch marker if you want a stitch marker instead of a progress keeper. Um, so we have a couple of those. This is my favorite set, <laughs> and it's actually not even from this time. It was from last time I made stitch markers, and I kept one of these for myself, and I'm always so surprised that they that they don't sell. Maybe they just didn't photograph well or something. But these are made with um, glass beads as well, and there is 
Uh, yeah, these are all glass beads, and they're kind of on a square stitch marker. And I like doing them in four, and I kind of have a... I like that they're all different, and I really like that there's a, a main one. So, like, if I'm working in the round, I usually use that, like, big one to do my beginning of round. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, these ones. Okay, there's actually two of them. So I'll take that off. Okay, these are also some glass ones. And I don't even know where I got these daisy beads, but they are my favorite things. Uh, again, glass lamp work beads, which I just think lamp work is so cool. Um, <laughs> they make such interesting, interesting things. And I did a little bit of it in high school. Um, and if I ever have a space where I can set up a settling torch, <laughs> then I will do some lamp work beads because they're super rad. Um, so that's another set that's available. Um, I'll show you a couple more. This one, oh, this one, I just think it's so cool too. Um, it's a little art deco-y progress keeper with this kind of gold starburst on a clear bead. And then we have one kind of one left in the pink as well. Which I'm, if nobody gets that one, I'm going to steal that one too. <laughs> These ones aren't on, um, aren't on backings yet, but I also have some stone ones. These are just, uh, these are citrine. Uh, there's four of those guys together. There we go. <laughs> and there is, uh, I'll show you two more. See, which are my favorite ones here? Ooh, these guys. Okay, so these ones kind of go with those Art Deco Progress Keepers, but these ones are just beautiful pink glass. And I think there's some stone in there too. Yeah, there's little rose quartz in there as well. Um, just have beautiful pinks in there and hmm, what else one more we'll show you these guys these are kind of a purple art deco we set they have some amethyst as well as some glass beads as well again set of four with one kind of beginning of round one so yeah, um, those are all available in my shop right now. There are some more options uh, as well. And um, BC, not BC, Canada Post. <laughs> Canada Post is doing um, free shipping, uh, free shipping Tuesdays, I think. So the next person to order something, I will just refund their shipping because um, I can send it out on Tuesday. For free. I uh, also for Canadian buyers. I there's a I can't really set it up properly on my website, and it's super frustrating. But um, the shipping for these stitch markers is set at twelve dollars if you're in Canada, which um, is not the actual price. <laughs> so I was able to send out six sets. Um, with just a regular $2 stamp. So if you do purchase it and you're in Canada, um, I can send it just regular mail and I will refund the extra shipping charges. It does say that on the website as well, but I just want to let you know that um, shipping will actually come out to $2 and you'll get a $10 refund. Unfortunately for anyone in the States or anywhere else, um, the shipping cost is the shipping cost and um, the free shipping is actually only, only for Canadians as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that is all available in my shop. Um, another thing I've kind of been thinking about starting up again is doing some online workshops. Um, I had kind of done some of them back in spring and um, lack of space kind of kept me from from doing more <laughs> but I I feel like I really enjoyed doing the live workshops about um, altering sweaters and things like that I did a workshop at Knit City all about altering sweaters which I really enjoyed um, and so I'm kind of thinking of doing little bite-sized 
chunks of live videos coming up soon. So, like, <laughs> uh, essentially, uh, if that's something that interests you, I would definitely suggest signing up to our website because Instagram is unreliable. And um, if you sign up to our so first sign up to our newsletter, which you can do on our website. <laughs> um, if you sign up to the newsletter, then you will get the actual information uh, as soon as it becomes available. And I'm hoping to be able to even do some, um, like before I was a little limited to doing afternoon classes or morning classes, um, hopefully I'll be able to put an evening in as well. So um, I'm going to experiment a little bit with timing. <laughs> uh, if, so if you have any suggestions for me, if you have anything that you want to learn about, specifically about, um, I really love talking about sweaters. <laughs> I'm mainly a, I, I design all the things, but I would consider myself a sweater designer. That is my passion. Um, and so I really love talking about sweater fit and how to make patterns work for you, how to change things in patterns um, to make them better fit your body. So if there's something that you want to learn about, um, leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear what you want to learn about. Um, also, you know, maybe what times work good for you. Um, I'm in the Pacific Northwest, so I am on Pacific time. Um, so my morning here starts at nine. My first class would probably be able to be about 10. Um, so that's one o'clock Eastern time. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is all new. So I, I had lots more options and I would love some input if this is something that interests you. Um, I'm thinking probably hour long classes where we can chat and, um, some back and forth and have lots of questions um, teach you some stuff send out some handouts all sorts of goodies like that um, yeah that's about it that's kind of I'm, I'm just in planning phase so I always like getting some input during planning phases because I want to give you what you want not what I think you want <laughs> anyways I think that is it for today um, so happy to be back I'm so happy to have a space where I can actually do this regularly and um, thank you for the motivation for finishing things. That's really awesome. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you in two weeks. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Bye.